Welcome back. And now to entertainment, an emotional Lady Gaga performed a dramatic version of the U.S. national anthem. Garth Brooks uh, sang an a cappella, and of course, uh, Tom Hanks hosted a star-studded nighttime celebration to cap President Joe Biden's inauguration on Wednesday. It was a day marked by diversity and communicated an appeal for unity. The lineups uh, depicted that, uh, of course, a lot of unity was needed at that time. Country singer Brooks, a Republican, took the stage. Jennifer Lopez performed a medley of uh, This Land Is Your Land and America the Beautiful while interjecting a Spanish, or rather in Spanish, <laughs> a 22-year-old black poet, Amanda Gorman, who captured the mixed emotions of the past four years with, with a poem in which she referred to herself as a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother uh, who can dream of becoming president only to find herself reciting for one. The delivery drivers, healthcare workers, and teachers were also not excluded. The event brought together uh, some of the biggest white, black, and Hispanic celebrities, marking a sharp contrast with Trump's inauguration in 2017, which is low on star power. And so we've um, been joined this morning by Ifeo Mai, our entertainment correspondent, to speak on the diversity of yesterday's inauguration and what it truly meant for the entertainment industry and for America for today. Hello. Good morning. How are Thanks you? Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I wasn't very excited with seeing Jennifer Lopez. I'm, I'm sure why she was picked, but um, <laughs> tell us why you know, she was picked. Um, I think, obviously, his team was quite deliberate about trying to have representation which I think we lacked deeply last year. Um, and what I, what I really liked about it was that it wasn't just about color or race, it was also about politics. Um, they found a brilliant way to get celebrities that are not a democratic, because you would think that that's the problem, you know, like maybe Trump didn't just have people who were uh, Republican, but this one, they were, they were quite um, intentional about having that diversity. The, the Spanish people, the, Mex the Mexicans, are not, the Latinos, and that, that group were heavily, heavily uh, demonized by the Trump supporters. So it's a big statement to have someone like Jennifer Lopez not only sing the national anthem, but do it in Spanish. So they were making a statement. Um, and I liked how the, the brilliance was done so well that it was subtle, entertaining, but still extremely powerful and making a political statement. Um, there's, there's been many renditions of the American National Anthem um, at the Super Bowl and many other places yeah. where people have stepped up to perform. How do you rate Lady Gaga's uh, delivery yesterday? Uh, it was very charismatic. <laughs> totally um, <loved> it. <laughs> Actually, dramatic. Totally loved very, it. very, very. Um, I, I think Lady Gaga is known for that. She is the she is the paparazzi in pictures. She is the life. She is extravagant. Mm -hmm. um, and it would be weird for her not to do that. Um, I, I know she takes it a lot more personal because from inception, she was there right next to Joe Biden. So I think this is a personal win for her. And speaking of diversity as well, Lady Gaga is the epitome of the LGBTQ community. So I know this means a lot more for them because Barack had a big plan to give them free whatever is give or if you're on a transgender or whatever, Barack will cover you and Trump came and scattered all of that. And I think Biden is coming back to, mm. you know, give them that, that kind of thing. So I know the tears and the emotion and the, the, all of that is hitting home for her because I think this is a big hope for people like her. So, and how about yeah. uh, the poem? Mm, that poem favorite. spoke mm. home. Mm. What do you think about it? What are your Even thoughts? thinking about it now is giving me a bit of shivers. Uh, I think it was really brilliant. It was, first of all, she's the youngest person to ever even give a poem in inauguration in their American history. And then she happened to be black. Again, a huge contrast to what they had faced in the last four years. Black people didn't have a voice. There was extreme tension in terms of um, injustice and, you know, Black Lives Matter movement and all of that, and the killings. So again, this is a huge, huge statement. And I think she did every single black, brown, any, in fact, anyone of color She would represented be and proud. embodied them, I yes. don't know how she did it because most of the time, you know, we have an issue with conveying our opinions and still being victimized, like mm -hmm. almost enjoying the victimization. Right. She found a way to still give power Indeed. And in, that, in that speech. All right.
Um, we are totally out of time. Thank you so much for stopping Thank by you. and having this conversation with us. Thank you so much. Um, we, of course, uh, would be saying goodbye here. Thank you so much for being a part of the breakfast um, in the last uh, two hours. Uh, we hope that you did enjoy it. Of course, if you missed out on any of it, you can catch up on social media at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Same with our YouTube channel. If your husband is a Manchester United fan, give him an extra piece of meat <laughs> this morning because guess who's top of the EPL table? Manchester United. Yes, and if you do need some extra motivation for your day, I would highly recommend you check out that poem, you know, delivered on the inauguration of Joe Biden yesterday. It was such a powerful and inspiring speech. And we hope that, uh, you know, we've uh, probably inspired you today to go out and make history. Donata Felix and Usaragi Obama, and it's bye from us.